action a little bit harder for him. Uh, really, really nice to see uh, these trainers bringing something a little bit unique. I liked getting insight from Aaron actually about his team. What he was talking about was it was all about speed, all about going fast and, and going first in every single turn. So that's something he could potentially lean into to, to really try and push it on and get that big damage down. Both trainers have to commit and play this Groudon Kyogre matchup, finding that board position. I talked about it with Rosemary earlier, that if you're the Groudon player, you really need control of the weather. You can't be playing in the rain because the Kyogre's just gonna run away with it, especially Aaron's Kyogre, which is often gonna be going guaranteed much, much faster than you. So a lot of work for Joe to do when it comes to controlling the weather, but he has a bulkier team. He has a team that can maybe pivot around a little easier, I'd say, just on paper than, than Aaron's team. And that could be his key to victory. And of course, if the Kyogre's getting out of hand, bring your Gastrodon. Yes, you can't redirect a spread attack, but what you can do is just power up the Gastrodon and have a Pokemon taking no damage from something like the Water Spout or the Origin Pulse. These are two trainers that are really in control, what we've seen in both of their sets on both days. They're just completely in control of the matchups. They never feel outmatched. They never feel like their opponent had just bested them. Like even if their opponent had gotten an advantage, they don't panic. They maintain composure and they still keep control and have, you know, have come all the way here to top four and you know, I just we simply can't contain our excitement for this matchup here, Adam. But Joe Ugarte and Aaron Trailer in top four, winner moves on to the finals. It's a really good match on our hands. There's no other way to describe it. I'm ready to see them get into game as the leads could be a big decisive factor in this one. We know that there's some games can be completely taken away. Aaron starting off with the Zashin and the Incineroar, ground on Incineroar from Joe. So really big for Joe, I think, is landing the Intimidate on the Zashin. But in response, you get the Intimidate down on the ground on. So nicely done by both trainers to identify that as a threat. And we know that, because we've seen it multiple times now, that Joe's ground on is assault vested, so doesn't have options for protect or potentially a sword stance that is common on a non-AB version of ground on. So it is, if he, if Joe is going to stay on the field with ground on, he will have to you know, stay with this negative to his attack stat. He's got to be uh, really thinking about switching it out in this turn. We've looked at the ground on a few times and, and being able to just get like caught very early, not exactly ideal. Looks like there's not gonna be any uh, switches though, as the fake out goes from Joe's side into the opposing Incineroar. And Behemoth Blade from Zashin into ground on. It, is, it has been intimidated, so it's back down to neutral uh, because of the, the item brings it up to plus one. So that's a neutral attack, brings it to about half. Precipice Blade does miss the Incineroar though. Zashin goes down to half. Uh, Incineroar flinching anyway in that turn. So a bit unfortunate that Precipice Blades does miss on that turn for Joe. That's not what you want, but you got the damage down on Zashian, which I think is really, really important. And you didn't get uh, faked out. So potentially Aaron, if he was faking out the Groudon, you know, that was a potential speed tie as well. I think they're both trying to figure out who's got the faster Incineroar. Obviously they got a bit of insight uh, from the uh, Intimidates at the beginning, but it's all gas, no brakes in this game. Sacred Sword brings Incineroar down to around 30% of his HP. And then now the Precipice Blaze does connect this time around, taking out Zacian, but because of Incineroar's Shukaberry, it really does not do too much damage to it. Unfortunately for Aaron to lose the Zacian this early in the matchup, but uh, Throat Chop ineffective into the Incineroar, but now can't use those sound-based moves that it would like to, like the potential parting shot. Definitely limiting the options a little bit there. But this game has just been both trainers just swinging for each other every turn. No protecting, no switching, just throwing out attacks. And this now becomes a, a potential swing in Aaron's favor. He's got control of the weather. He's got the Kyogre on the board. That's exactly where he wants to be, staring down Groudon and Incineroar. While Joe would probably like to try and fight back, he does have to consider maybe a little bit of a pivot around now because you just can't give up two Pokemon that easily. And here comes the answer to Kyogre. Yes, Gastrodon with its Storm Drain ability will redirect water attacks towards itself. Of course, if Ga or Kyogre goes for a spread water attack, it will st still hit the other side. And that is what happens with this water spout. Gonna boost the special attack on Gastron, which will be nice for Joe, but this super effective water spout will still be enough to take down the Incineroar. Now you have to wonder, with the Kartana getting onto the field, 
Uh, it's not just so safe for Gastron to just hang out around the whole time uh, to stop the Kyogre because Kartana is actually one of the few Pokemon that is very well uh, capable of handling the Gastron in this format. It's definitely very well capable. It's got the perfect move to deal with it. And Joe reveals his uh, last Pokemon actually as the Zacian, so no Charizard there. Um, really, you know, not going to want to play in the rain. Does have to get the Groudon in at some point. But this turn, I mean, don't forget, there's been no Dynamax throughout this game either. And that, I think, could be a huge deciding factor. Maybe the Kartana decides to Dynamax and, and just apply a huge amount of pressure. But Aaron always seems to be planning ahead. He brought the Kartana in, thinking the Gastrodon would appear. He's now switching out the Kyogre, waiting for the Groudon to appear and control that weather at the end of the game. And Incineroar gets to do its favorite thing, intimidate the Zacian and take away the boost. Gastron will switch out into uh, the Groudon, though. So regardless, there is a ground type in that slot, on that spot. So if Kartana did opt for a Leaf Blade on this turn, regardless would be doing super effective damage. So it could potentially be a very safe play to just say, if it's either Gastro or it's Groudon, I'm totally cool with hitting it for a max overgrowth. Yeah, that's a really big problem, I think, is just being able to not have a safe switch in there. I mean, this Kartana could get going in this turn. Of course, you've got to worry. If Kartana gets one knockout, it's probably going to be getting more knockouts as well. So that could just really set the ball rolling here. Zashin does get to take the sword it, though. But look, with the Dynamax, it's just not taking that much damage. It's strange to see a Kartana uh, taking hits comfortably. The Groudon switch in, though, is being punished rather hard as Max Overgrowth just takes that knockout. Yes, that never stood a chance. And now, importantly for the Kartana, with this Beast Boost boosting its attack by one stage, you talked about the steamroll potential that Kartana can have. You get one KO, now you have that boost to your attack. It makes it even more likely to get the next KO. Uh, so Gastron, who has to come back in now because Joe is down to his final two Pokemon, uh, now you're really not too concerned about it because as long as Kartan is on the field, this Gastron really can't be a problem for Kyogre. Well, this is a really nice ball position for Aaron. Not only does he have the Pokemon advantage, he's dealt with the Groudon so he can bring Kyogre in at any point. But this turn in in all of its like build-up is Incineroar to deal with the Zacian with a fake out, and then the Kartana to just go after that uh, Gastrodon. What are you going to do with the Gastrodon? Are you going to protect against the Max Overgrowth? You can try. You could it, max guard still, right? Because we to. have not seen a Dynamax out of Joe yet. You have to max guard here, I think. Or else this Gastrodon is going to take way too much damage through a, a regular protect. And Joe, yeah, it's forced into the Dynamax on the Gastrodon. Yeah, here it is. So this is now the second time we've seen the Pink Sea Slug Dynamax here in Salt Lake City. Uh, was very effective the last time around. This time, what does help is gaining, uh, you know, doubling its HP stats, so it could potentially be helpful. But because of the Beast Boost, it really does not matter too much. It would maybe under a neutral Leaf play, Blade. We could have seen what happened, but I'm not really too sure. No Ooh, Max Guard, though. No so Gastron, Gastron's taking names on this turn. It's trying to <laughs> attack. It might not be able to, though, because Kartana's Max Overgrowth goes into the Gastron slot, and that's Ooh. a clean one-hit KO onto your Dynamax Pokemon. Very tough turn for Joe there. Did not go for the max guard. I think Joe was expecting the uh, maybe pivot of the target, expecting uh, Aaron to think of the max guard, go after the Zashim, and then weave in an attack with the Gastrodon. But, you know, it kind of came back to bite him a little bit there as Kartana just said, you know what? That's the spot I need to get rid of. I'm not worried about the Zashim this turn as I'm faking it out. Let me just deal with that Gastrodon. And it wasn't allowed to make a single move. It went back down to normal size almost as quick as it went up to the Dynamax <laughs> size. So not a good game for the Gastrodon and Zashin now. Facing down three Pokemon, probably not feeling itself too much in this matchup. Back to the drawing board for Joe, I think, in this one. What I love about how Aaron has played this game uh, as the Zacian, or Zacian with Sacred Sword brings his inner down to four HP, not enough for the knockout, but a plus two Kartana with the max airstream, not doing too much damage, but more importantly, getting speed boost. So now that Kartana can be faster than it in future turns. Uh, so the last thing to, you know, Incineroar is not even getting knocked out at, at this point. But it actually will because of Flare Blitz, which is really helpful for Aaron. It's going to knock itself out from Flare Blitz. Doesn't, Doesn't even matter. need it because he knocks it out anyway. Joe And Joe is going to lose his first game on stream all weekend. He's been so dominant. Aaron picks up game one here in top four. But quickly, how he has, how Aaron has made 
put himself in spots where he can just make simple decisions. Like, yes, I know Gastronon's coming in. I can still water spell and get the knockout on Cinero. Yes, I know Gastronon's switching out. I can still safely just max overgrowth that slot no matter what. He's not really putting so much mental strain on his decisions. He's able to just make consistent plays. Well, what I really think we saw from Aaron there is quintessential Pokemon planning ahead, making those reads about what your opponent's going to be doing and capitalizing on it before it's relevant. When the Groudon switched out, the Kyogre was making sure it was always in a nice position in case it had to face down that Kyogre, uh, the Groudon. You want the Kyogre to come in second and control the weather. Uh, just really planning ahead, you know, making sure that the Intimidate was available as well. In the fact that Zashun came in, you know, he forced it in a little bit by knocking out the Incineroar, but he had his Incineroar available and ready to come back in and neutralize it. Some of those hits could have got a little scarier if it wasn't for that Intimidate. And once that changes the numbers, we could have a very different game on their hands. Joe definitely needs to reconsider this strategy. We've talked so much about how his team counters Kartana, but the Kartana still ran away with the game in number one. So he's got to think, how do I get around this? Maybe it's the Charizard, but if you bring the Charizard, you've just got to be more scared of that Kyogre. Yeah, it's definitely a difficult position. This is the, the yin and yang, uh, you know, back and forth that Kyogre and Groudon matchups tend to have when we have them both uh, in these restricted formats. Is it, It's not as clear as black and white on this is a better situation because you can say, okay, Kartana or Kyogre's good against Groudon, but then Gastrodon's good against Kyogre, which then makes Kartana good against Gastrodon. Like there is so, so many overlapping aspects to this uh, battle. And this is what we love so much about Pokemon is there's really no clear cut answer on how to approach this set. There is a matchup chart for this matchup somewhere that is absolutely insane. It's got so many different branches and paths that you can take for both trainers, honestly. But Aaron, I think his control of the board in game number one was, was the biggest difference maker for me. Just using that wealth of experience that he has, planning ahead and just knowing what he needed to do. He, he was talking to me earlier about how his team is all about going fast. Well, he only used one speed boosting move in that whole game, which was at the end. He didn't really need it, to be honest. So it's nice to see him mix it up. And another mix up here in the lead choice, uh, just pivoting away from what works. There is the Charizard that I did want to look at a little bit more but it's facing down the Kyogre. Kyogre in DD Female, so Aaron is switching it up here, will set up the Psychic Terrain, so no priority moves from grounded Pokemon like the Incineroar, mm -hmm. so there is no option for a fake out on this turn. Uh, and the adjustment from Joe with this Charizard this time around instead of uh, the Groudon the last time around. Well, the fake out turn number one, the, the first time we saw uh, their leads come out, I think was one of the only turns where Aaron kind of got the the bad end of the turn, right? It was the only turn where he took a good amount of damage from that Precipice Blades, and if he doesn't want to deal with that, you have an answer in your team to say, let's not even mess about with Fake Out. Let's not dance any of this dance, and let's just bring this in. All it's done is set the terrain, and indeed he's leaving. Ooh, a nice pivot here. If this can stay on the field, it's going to be feeling pretty good about setting up for this Kyogre. Both the Ndidi and the Incineroar are swapping out mm -hmm. on this turn. Whimsicott goes in for Aaron, and then Groudon setting up the sun thanks to his drought ability for Joe. We've seen Groudon be so pivotal for Joe's strategies throughout the entire weekend. And this is a very common strategy in, uh, in you know, especially because of Dynamax. You don't lead Groudon, you still have to threaten the back. And then once you're ready to attack with Charizard and the Gigantamax Wildfires, then you switch in Groudon to ensure the sun is up so you get that boost to uh, to your damage to your damage output on Charizard. No T-Max Wildfire on this turn, though. Instead, it will be the Airstream Ooh. into Kyogre, bringing Kyogre down to 12 HP. Almost a clean knockout there, but was not enough for it. So we'll get the speed boost, show Charizard's life orb, and a water spell from a no, no HP. Kyogre in the sun Ooh. is just absolutely nothing. That is disastrous for Aaron. They're getting no damage down. The ground on taking two hit points of that whole thing. Water spout relying on the health, maybe not expecting the Charizard to attack that slot. Don't forget, at the beginning of the turn, Indeedy was on the field. Indeedy usually uses follow me. And as the opposing player, in this case, Joe, you have to respect that. But Joe's saying, I don't even know if the Indeedy is going to be there. I do want to target the Kyogre. And if you let me do it, I am going to take the massive amount of damage on it and completely neutralize your water spout. So really nicely done. Aaron seeing that the Kyogre is of no use right now. But pivoting to this double supportive 
pairing, which isn't going to be able to apply immediate pressure from this. Tailwind out of Whipsicott, though, so all of the uh, Pokemon on Aaron's side of the field will have their speed doubled for the next four turns. G-Max Wildfire will bring Whipsicott down to its Focus Sash, but of course, at the end of the turn, thanks to that residual damage from the Wildfire, it will be knocked out here. Uh, this Charizard, through two turns, has just done so much damage here. We'll have a little residual damage onto the Indeedee as well. Uh, so maybe at this point, you can just go for your, you know, your third turn, another max airstream into the Indeedee slot. So I know that Aaron wants the Tailwind. I understand that. But looking earlier in the game, the Ndidi has now given up its boost. Uh, maybe just water spouting with the follow me could have been a difference maker there. Watching the game play out, this seems tricky. And, and Aaron has to bring in now either a very low health Kyogre, which is going to be relying on Origin Pole. Uh, it will get control of the weather. Um, but the Charizard has been setting up speed boosts. And I'm just a, a little bit uh, shocked that he's let this get away um, and let so much damage go down early doors. All credit to Joe, though. He's played it so well. He's seen that the Charizard is a massive, massive factor. Potentially even the Gastrodon. At home. Oh, he has left the Gastrodon at home. That's confirmed. We've seen all four. So that adaptation, really nicely done. Kyogre has to be looking at Origin Pulses now. And if you're a Precipice Blades or Origin Pulse apologist, uh, you know exactly what it can do. Yeah, and uh, because of, like, I was going to mention the Gashanon not being brought in this matchup, Joe deciding I don't need it here. I'm too worried about the other things that Aaron provides on his team. Kyogre just switching in to reset the rain and then switching back out into Gartana. So he had no interest in using a, an attack from Kyogre this turn. Uh, a, a nice bait there as it did force Charizard on its last turn of, of, uh, of Gigantamax to go for Max Guard instead of attacking. Follow me from Indeedee. Uh, will, will would have redirected the attacks there. Uh, but, you know, the Kartana, or excuse me, the Kyogre just switching in to switch out was enough pressure to force Joe to waste his last turn of G-Max. Yep, it didn't want to play around with it. And that's probably something that's huge for Aaron in this matchup. Nicely controlling the board again. The Ndidi, yes, has access to the follow me, and that could be huge. Maybe that's why he needed to save it, something I was a little bit confused about earlier. But being able to keep it for now, you know, just wants to land some damage with something like the Kartana. But the weather control is going to be still a factor for Joe. He has the Pokemon advantage, which makes it easier to control the weather. Um, and of course, the terrain will be coming to an end that Ndidi won't be able to, you know, really capitalize on that. So this Incineroar fake out could be huge. But Dynamax from Aaron, you it doesn't make sense to Dynamax the Kyogre when it's so, so, so low on health. Of course, the Indeedee, I would be alarmed <laughs> if he decided to Dynamax that. So the Kartana coming through. This now needs to be the Pokemon dealing the damage in the last couple turns of the Tailwind. Kartana right now can deal some very big paper cuts with that Dynamax attack on this turn. Follow me from Ndidi. We'll redirect any attacks that were going towards Kartana and instead bring them into the Ndidi slot. Max Knuckle, a fighting type move, neutral on Tizashian, but more importantly, gets an attack buff this turn, which will, you know, help out Kartana do even more damage. The thing you have to worry about is that the next turn you'll be facing down uh, at a potential Incineroar, but the Sacred Sword is not enough to knock out the Ndidi. Would have been, uh, with the wild, will the Wildfire be enough? Yes, it does take it out there. So understanding the combination of Wildfire damage and Sacred Sword would be enough to get rid of that Ndidi. And now Aaron is down to his final two Pokemon, a Dynamax Kartana and a 12 HP Kyogre. There's a lot of work being requested. And uh, this Kyogre, you know, it, like you say, is exceptionally low. That said, the fake out threat isn't there. The Ndidi controlling the terrain is still becoming a factor. But at any point, Joe can just switch in the Groudon and take away the rain. As soon as that happens, this Kyogre is pretty much done for, I'd say, um, because it's just not going to be able to deal with the requisite amount of damage. Not the Groudon showing up this time, though. No, instead, the Charizard switching in the Incineroar slot and Zashian with a Protect. Yet another defensive play out of Joe. Not a lot of offensive output being put down the last couple of turns here. But the Max Knuckle into the Charizard slot is resisted. Doesn't do too much damage, but it does give 
Kartana a second attack boost. So if the Kartana on its, say, third turn can go for a max airstream and become faster, that might be a big deal. The Origin Pulse go does connect onto Charizard, so 85% of the time it has worked out for him, and Charizard is knocked out here. That's, this does, however, give Joe a free switch into either Incineroar or, Car or Groudon. Uh, if you need, I mean, the Kyogre's just gone. It's gone with G-Max Wildfire, uh, so it doesn't even matter. You don't need to show the Groudon. This Kartana is going to have to 3v1 without a tailwind. Yeah, this is, this, this, Joe has rebounded, you know, incredibly well here, considering how strong a position Aaron was in game one. Joe has really been commanding here in game two. Uh, and as Incineroar comes out, that is yet another Intimidate, which does negate the Max Knuckle boost to its attack stat there. I know the rain is up, but you don't want to be facing down the uh, Incineroar if you're Kartana. No, the Kartana has got ooh, a lot of work and knowing, that, especially while it's Dynamax, it only has single target moves, so it's not going to be able to pick up those double knockouts. The Sacred Sword brings it so low anyway. This Max Steel Spike isn't going to help the Kartana, and this Zashin just takes it anyway. Yeah, you can be plus six defense. If you only have four HP, I think they'll, they'll be able to break through that wall. Incineroar parting shot, though, into the Kartana, uh, lowering its stats again and switching out into Groudon. Kind of just Kind of just like, you know, waiting it out, playing it safe for him. He understands you don't want to make any big mistakes uh, on this turn. And now the crowd on team and Zashin can attack again. This is this is locked up for Joe. Yep, the Tailwind's gone. The, the Kartana's just not able to, to knock both of these Pokemon out before either of them get to move. So uh, it's just not looking like uh, we're going to be wrapping this one up. But we are heading to game three. And that's all we can really ask for, Adam, is seeing a <laughs> seeing a matchup with su such great trainers like Joe and Aaron getting a, you know, best of three, actually going to game three to decide who moves on to the finals here in Salt Lake City. Like, this is this is <laughs> incredibly exciting. And both wins were really convincing from both, both sides. So, you know, we really have no idea how this battle was going to end. Both trainers, actually, in each of their wins, played so so well if you're new to the game if you're learning these are the two trainers to watch right now you know they're obviously top four at this regional but the way they play the game is so so deep and, and understanding is just always there in every single turn break down the turns see what they're doing this game i talked about it after game one aaron was controlling the turn every time aaron was uh, making sure that he was in a good position and was thinking ahead and after that turn one on those early couple turns in particular, Joe felt like he was really controlling the game. He was always in the driving seat. He was making those heads up switches and getting the G-Max Wildfire down after that Max Airstream did huge amounts of damage to the Kyogre really caused a problem. That Kyogre was always being forced to switch out or be saved for a point where G-Max Wildfire wasn't in play. That was something I think overlooked a little bit by myself um, where the Kyogre just can't sit on the field when it's that low. No, definitely not at that point. You do have to you have to worry. You, I understand that you have Tailwind with the Whimsicott, so you are able, in theory, to get the Kyogre out at full HP. And if Tailwind is up, you're able to get the super strong Water Spouts uh, from your Kyogre. But if you have a very negative turn like it did there, where it's brought down very low, uh, that, was, that seemed like a call that Aaron wasn't expecting on that turn one to target that slot. Because the safer play would have been to follow me and Didi, Right, or with Ndidi to redirect that max airstream. And it just, you know, by switching out Ndidi there, it just let the Kyogre just take too much damage. That was a, a big problem in my book that you had the follow me, you had the ability to, to get that going, but the, the priority was the Tailwind. He wanted the Tailwind set up, so he had to get the Ndidi out. He, had to lead, he was forced to lead Ndidi to block the fake out. And I totally understand and respect that. But I think moving towards the, the Women's Got Tailwind a little quickly caught him there and Joe took advantage of that. The water spout obviously painful to watch when it's doing that little damage. Um, and then it really felt like Joe's game to lose at that point and he just didn't. He just controlled the game so nicely, kept the board position, really smart switching. And the longer the game went on, the more impactful that G-Max wildfire was between turns. So back to the drawing board for Aaron in this game as he makes an adaptation to his move. Both of these trainers here in game three. Only one, unfortunately, can move on to the finals. They both have a dream. Aaron wants to get his second regional title in the Sword and Shield era of VGC. Joe wants to get his second regional title altogether, and one of these guys is not going to be able to realize that dream. It's tough 
but I'm sure game three is going to be an absolute masterclass from both of them, giving it their all as it essentially comes down to a best of one now. Uh, one game to see who gets through to the finals. Crowd on Zashin, Zashin Incineroar across the board. The Incineroar, of course, providing that fake out pressure, but if you're Aaron, you've got to make sure that fake out pressure goes into the right slot and you can capitalize on it. If you leave the Groudon unchecked, it could just precipice blade you, could use damage. If you leave the Zashin unchecked, it's just gonna do some Zashin things. But at least, in this case, I mean, it's now gonna be the same on both sides, but I was about to say, Aaron's Incineroar had already intimidated Joe Zashin, but Joe just matches that immediately. <laughs> that, that's what you do. When you see an Incineroar, you bring in your own to do the same thing. Sacred Sword brings Incineroar down to around 30% of its <laughs> HP, and <laughs> she says, I'll do the exact same thing. Now, uh, Party Shot from Incineroar on Aaron's side is going to be able to let him switch out into something that can potentially help in this matchup more. Could be the Whimsicott with a uh, with a Tailwind or potentially, you know, bring that one of your other sweepers. You'd wonder, like, did he... So he's showing Kyogre. That means he either left Whimsicott or Kartana off the team. That's a big choice, and I'm not so sure about the Kyogre showing this early. Yes, this turn you'd be able to, to maybe throw out a, a big attack, take out that Incineroar, get huge damage down on the Zacian, and then maybe polish it off with your own Zacian. But you're the Kyogre player who knows the Groudon's in the back. You can't reliably just throw out big water-type attacks and hope that there's no sun switching. It's just an option that you have to respect. And this may force Aaron to, to pivot around a little bit. Of course, the Incineroar just also has access to Fake Out this turn. No Indeedy on the field so far to slow that down. Um, so really needs to, to figure out uh, how much this Kyogre can do as Groudon just comes right in for Joe. Yep, Zashin switching out into Groudon. Uh, as of right now, it doesn't look like the Indeedy is switching onto the field for Aaron to stop the... Uh, oh, actually, it might have because Kyogre is switching out. So I was looking at the, the Zashin slot, but instead Kyogre swaps into Incineroar to get an Intimidate. A uh, second one onto Joe's Incineroar and the first one onto his Brout on there. So their physical attacks are going to do just a little bit less damage. And <laughs> Joe being... Uh, very pivot hungry, saying, oh, you brought Kyogre? Let me show you my Gastrodon. So it was revealed. Joe has shown all four Pokemon. That means he has not brought the Charizard, and he did, importantly, bring Gastron in the back. So if Aaron has the Kartana waiting in the back, that's good news for him. That's what he wants to see, and Joe's really showed his hand there. But now it's up to Aaron to call it and see if he can match it. We've talked about which grass type he's bought, and Aaron probably knows at this point uh, the rest of the game plan is becoming a little more apparent to him. He knows what he's got to do. The Incineroar nicely using the fake out there. That's the first one we've actually seen go through. And Zashin, I think Zashin just needs to buy some time, maybe try and carve out a Pokemon advantage here, and then it'll be in a good position. Both trainers, though, are holding on to their Dynamax, and that could swing it in anyone's favor. Stone Edge from Groudon does connect into Incineroar. Only 80% accurate, so you're really tempting fate on that turn. Incineroar is down. Gashadon flinching, of course, thanks to the fake out on that turn. Uh, I, I understand Zashin is that neutral attack because of the Intimidate, but I, I was kind of expecting Behemoth Blade to do a little more to ground on. So does that worry you for Aaron to see that Behemoth Blade is potentially a three-hit KO into ground on? That's not what you want to see, but I don't think the Zashian is needed to, to really carry this game and push Aaron through. Uh, the Kyogre and potential Kartana are the options that he wants to play with there. So that could just be his Ashen sitting on the field just saying, you know what, the other two are going to do the heavy lifting. You just get the bits of chip damage down to make those knockouts even easier and soften things up if it's Kartana to come in, clean up and finish the KOs. And then, of course, get the beast boosts and, and go a little bit crazy with that one. Groudon, of course, forced out because of what we've been seeing uh, on the weather control. Joe, with his whole team revealed, needs to find out what that last Pokemon is very, very quickly, I'd say. Incineroar intimidating yet again on switch in, but this Behemoth Blade now at minus one attack into the Incineroar or into the Gastron slot, excuse me, is not going to do a lot of damage. Of course, the Kyogre really can't even touch him at all either because of Water Spout thanks to Storm Drain. More importantly, though, this will claim the knockout onto Incineroar, so that is one less threat that is potentially facing down the Kartana for Aaron. Mm -hmm. The only thing that you're really now worried about uh, would be a potential Sacred Sword from Zashian or, uh, you know, uh, Prespice Blade out of the ground Ooh. on Earth Power. Zashian is not enough 
for a KO there. After that storm drain, that really hurts. And I was just thinking the Gastron doesn't really get to fire back too well against the Kyogre, but it does get to bruise that Zacian. Uh, it's been sitting on the field, and this is my concern for Aaron's side. He's leaving the Zacian on the field. It's been sat there for a little while now. It's been getting a lot of Intimidates down. It's at minus one attack. And if you just leave it there, you know, then Aaron, uh, Joseph can focus down against the rest of the team. You know, this Kyogre may just have to switch out right now just to get control of the weather again. And that switch could be heavily punished. And that would be a big concern for me if you're in Joe's shoes. So Joe is really relying on this end game board position with Groudon just being able to, to control the weather. And he needs that Groudon to be available. He's okay to do it now. Both trainers are at three to three. When you get down to your last two, you lose the ability to switch. And if, say, the Kyogre is going to leave the field now, it gets tough, right? Do you want the Groudon to leave so you can bring it in afterwards later? Or do you just want to go for it because you want to get damage down, knock it out, and just force the Kartana in in a really tough 1v3, 1v2 situation? Well, it looks like both these trainers want to go for it as there are no swaps on this turn. Groudon has Dynamax. Will we see a match out of the Kar Kyogre? Or is Aaron saving his Dynamax for the Kartana in the back? We still haven't even confirmed if it's there, but it seems likely. Behemoth Blade, though, now into the Groudon. Will do double damage because it's a Dynamax Pokemon. That's how it works. So, you know, those two Intimidates have actually hurt it that much because think about how much more it would have done. Storm Drain, though, boosting Gastron's special attack again. It's be close, this Joe. is in the sun with the Salt Vest. It's not no. enough to take out the Groudon. So he will get one attack here, and that is the Max Quake into Zashi, which will be enough to knock it out. Gets a special defense buff there uh but so it all aaron is now down to his final two pokemon here the kyogre and this last pokemon that will be revealed i ran the numbers quickly and i thought that the water spout would get it close from full health but it just wasn't a factor now water spout not a thing you're going to be able to do that earth power bringing it to just over half but now you've got to move on over to the unreliable origin pulse the pokemon count uh, is going to be sat in joe's favor at the end of this turn and Aaron has to show his final Pokemon right now. It is the Kartana, it is a Dynamax candidate, but he's gonna have to play uh, rather wisely. Maybe this is Aaron's out, is I know the sun is up and it does hurt a little bit, but you've gotta go after that Groudon with the, the Kyogre in the sun. That said, very, very smart from Joe, the Max Quake with a special defense boost, it might just be able to take it. The, the, uh, the full power, full health water spout was underwhelming at best. Um, I think Aaron banking a little bit there, but Joe just feeling so confident, knowing that, yes, I've got the sun, I can take it, and let me just deal some huge damage. There's the final Dynamax from Aaron. I really like this, but if you're the Katana, you've got to go after the Gastrodon, right? You can't just leave the Gastrodon eating up Storm Drains, then you leave the ground on open. So it's a really tough situation for Aaron, and Joe put himself in a fantastic endgame board position. And of course, if you leave Groudon open, there he Groudon has access to fire moves in the sun right so uh very dangerous Kyo Kyogre or excuse me Kartana with the max airstream takes out Groudon so now Joe has lost his Dynamax Pokemon it is two to two right now a speed boost which is important for both of them mm -hmm. and an attack boost that he will be getting on Kartana thanks to the uh thanks to the beast boost ability so i don't know how this kyogre is trained uh because zashian is such a fast pokemon at plus one will it outspeed he doesn't really care the gosh gashadon is just there to stop it right now but a plus two earth power does Ooh. have that's an assault best kartana that means like that would have done more if he didn't have the av on uh so now we know zashian is coming back in does the does the Kyogre at plus one speed outspeed the Zashi? It doesn't matter though. It's, in, it's still in the sun and it's still gonna do a limited amount of damage unless he switches over to Origin Pulse. The Kartana has to do all of the work here. And you've left the Gastrodon getting Storm Drains. It's the third Storm Drain now, I believe. That, that's just gonna be able to knock, it, if Gastrodon gets to attack here, it gets to knock out both or either of the Pokemon of its choosing. And this is, the Aaron has to deal with the Gastrodon this turn. Gastrodon is 
finally taken care of. It has done so much for Joe, not just in this set, in this set, but throughout the entire run here in Salt Lake City. That is enough for it. He is down to his final Pokemon, and what a Pokemon to have as Zashian is the team, or the mm -hmm. Pokemon that this team is really built around. That's a plus two attack Kartana, so that's gonna be a problem. Single target Water Spout, but it is in the sun and has the lowered HP, so it does not do a lot of damage. It's up to the Sacred Sword. It's Kartana, does there take it, it out, and there it is. Now the Kartana is gone. He cannot use those Beast Boosts anymore. And it's down with this Kyogre, unfortunately, against Zashian. So nicely done from Joe on the previous turn to understand that the Kyogre was no longer a threat. Hitting the Gastrodon attack into the Kartana. So, so nice. This Kyogre, yes, it's going to move before the Zashian, but what can it do? That Zashian is still so, so healthy, and I think Zashian is just going to be able to wrap this one up. Does have to try and get through uh, the final turns of the Sun as well, uh, buying some time with the Protect uh, to try and get through that, and of course, get the recovery. Uh, but I don't, the recovery is going to help out Water Spout. That's cool. It gets it um, more damage on Water Spout, but there's still one more turn of Sun to go. The Kyogre has to fish go for here. double protect. He, he gets, gets it. it. He oh. gets the double protect. Aaron with the 30% chance protects his Kyogre. His player up won't hit it. He'll get more recovery from uh, the, the grassy terrain. Gone. And the sun is gone. So now this is back in play. And if you want to keep using player up, there's a 10% chance you won't even hit. It's uh, going to be a really, really close one. This Kyogre is less healthy than the Zashio, but it's been getting recovery. It's feeling pretty good about itself. And the single target, Origin Pulse, does connect. Finally, something going right for the Kyogre. Does bring Zacian Ooh. down to under half. You know another one will knock it out. Oh, oh my goodness! The 10% chance comes true! Kyogre nimbly dodging the player up from the Zacian, and now all you have to do is connect on your attack. Wait, you've got to connect the origin pulse. Or oh, actually, it's the backup super healthy. Water Spout could be the Water angle. Spout might be enough base power at this point. Kyogre is at around 75, 80% of its health range. Obviously, the more HP you have, the more damage it does. Do you risk that 50% chance? But <laughs> Joe, you've got to buy a ticket to win the raffle. You sure do, Adam, and I think, I think Aaron agrees with us. Water Spout, with all that HP, is dead. is dead! And Aaron Trailer is moving on to the finals here in Salt Lake City. Oh my goodness, everything lands for Aaron. The double protect to get through the last turn of the sunlight, to get 